Right, I know, I know, it's been three years since we've done a tutorial, but we're finally going to do one. It's an ISD immersion from hyperspace tutorial, as seen in this shot. First, what we're going to do is we're going to get the FBX model into Blender. I've linked it in the description below. Now, be warned, this is a big guy. It's going to be taxing on the computer. So what I recommend, if you can bring it in, is to go straight to the Simplify panel and bring the texture limit down to about 1024. If you can't get this ISD to work, then there is other ones online on CG Trader or Turbo Squid. You can find one there and use that instead. Let's get our camera set up in the location that we want it. So we're going to put in these values for the X, Y, and Z location. As well as putting 90 for the X rotation. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select all the elements of the ISD and then join them using Control J and then put them in a collection called ISD. Let's make another collection called ISD Lights because we'll need to use that later. Okay, let's give the ISD a bit of texture. So you can use this bevel node to give the panelling on the ISD a bit more sharpness. I'd recommend using a value between 0 and 1 to do that. Next we're going to get a mixed colour node and then a colour ramp and plug that into the factor and then a noise texture and plug that into the colour ramp factor. Put the noise texture up to about 109 and the detail up to 15. Crank the black and white values for the colour ramp to about a quarter of the way through the node. And then we need an RGB value for the actual colour of the hull. And just so our noise texture isn't so harsh, we're going to put the A value to a dark grey colour. For the colour of the hull, we're going to put it to a slightly off pure white colour. I'm going to put the roughness around about 0.7 and the IOR up to 2. For simplicity, we're going to put all these nodes together in a group just so we can copy and paste it to the other panels. Then what we're going to do is copy the group, we're going to paste it into any material that says panel on it. I'm going to do the exact same for the lights. I'm going to put the base colour down to a kind of dark grey. Put the IOR to about 1.45. And if you, I haven't done it in my one, but if you want to illuminate the, the windows on the ISD, then this is how you do it. And then same as before, we're going to group the nodes and copy and paste them to any material that says window on it. Now when we come to the last two, it's the engines, and here is how you light the engines. A nice kind of blue colour and add it up to about 10 strength usually does the trick. Okay, let's add the stars. So, we're going to go into the world, and we're going to add a sky texture. We're going to add a brightness contrast, then a hue saturation value, and then a mix node. And we'll need to duplicate it because we need another one. Plug them into each other like so. For the hue saturation, we want the saturation to zero. And for the brightness contrast, we want it all the way down to about minus 21 and a half. Put the colour into colour, and you can see bright sunlight onto the ISD. So we're going to have to manipulate it. There we go. We've left it not too bad. To add the stars, we'll need a noise texture. And then pressing Ctrl T to get the transform those up and then another colour ramp. We'll put that into the B value of our first mix node. Then we'll crush the white and black values up to about three quarters of the node. Let's put the scale to somewhere about 3,000 to 5,000. And then let's change the X rotation to about 32 and a half. You can't see the stars now, but when we change our camera lens value, then they'll show up. Now, for the sun not to act on the stars, we need a light path. Plug the top one into the factor of the first mix node. Okay, time for the stars to show up. Let's change the focal length to about 135 millimeters. There we go. Now if the stars look too big for you, jump back into the world and change the scale about a little bit. I prefer the more subtler look for the stars, but if you want them to look bigger, then absolutely go for it. 
Okay, now let's get this guy coming out of hyperspace. Firstly, we'll go to frame 70 and put in these values. We want such a big Y value that when he emerges from hyperspace, it looks like he's really fast and came from a long, long way away. Then we're going to play around with the scale just a wee bit, just so we can accentuate how big this Star Destroyer is. Let's jump forward five frames. And bring the Star Destroyer way closer to the camera. There we go. You can see that emergence from hyperspace really coming along. And just a quick tip, if you want your renders looking more cinematic, then I'd recommend putting the aspect ratio to 2560 to 1080. Okay, let's go to the camera now, and we're going to add a rotation keyframe for frame 0. And then let's jump to frame 189. And then change it from 90 to 93. So we can see the camera pans up as Star Destroyer comes out from hyperspace. Now you can have a wee play around with where the Star Destroyer is in space when it comes out of hyperspace. It was just a wee bit too high up in the shot for me, so I've brought it down and I've pushed it back ever so slightly just so we can see the top of the bridge. But it's really up to you whoever you want it to look like. Once you've got it to a place where you're happy with it, jump into the graph editor and then we'll add a noise modifier. If you put it to the scale to about 15.5, strength about 0.05, and then the phase somewhere around 39, that'll give the camera that handheld look. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the Z rotation. Now it's looking pretty good, but we're going to use the Bezier handles just to customise it the way we want it. Okay, once we've done that, let's jump into some post FX. Tick the bloom and tick the lens. To the bloom, we're going to put into a wide soft up to 9 and put the power to about 0.74. Now for the lens, I like to use a bit of the lateral chromatic aberration. Now it's up to you how much you want to use it, but 0.15 seems to look good to me. Once we've done that, we can add some lights to the edge of the Star Destroyer. This orangey colour, about 1000 watts and a radius of 1, seems to look the best. And once you've made one and positioned it sort of where you want it, you can jump to number 7 on the numpad and then start placing them along the sides. Once you've placed them, have a look at them and maybe move them around a little just to break up any patterns. And then lastly, what I did is I thought the shadows were a wee bit too dark on the underside of the hull. Jump back into the world shader, and at B mix value, take it from pure black to a value just above it. And that'll give the underside of the hull just a wee bit more light. And there we go. There's a sped up process of how I managed to do the ISD shot. Hopefully you can take the principles of this and do it into your own shots. I'd love to see the results. Catch you soon.